Hello. My name is Charles Webster Bear, and today is October 18th, 2011. A little bit after one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm in Bend, Oregon, USA, on the planet known as Earth. And what I want to talk about today is the history of the universe. Now, the history of the universe begins 17 billion years ago. And this is because one of two things. Either the universe was created 17 billion years ago, or 17 billion years ago, the universe was so small that humans can't comprehend how small it was, because it was infinitely small, and humans can't comprehend the concept of infinity. So 17 billion years ago, the universe A was created, or B became large enough for humans to be able to comprehend. And therefore, the history of the universe begins 17 billion years ago. 17 billion years ago, the universe was <clears throat> an energy plasma that was rapidly expanding. As this plasma expanded and cooled, it began to form quarks, which gradually expand, uh, cooled off and formed uh, neutrons. And it was leptons, which gradually cooled off and formed uh, electrons. And as these electrons and uh, neutrons continued uh, their cooling off, they formed uh, the hydrogen atom. So, <clears throat> now we've got this huge, hot, rapidly expanding cloud of hydrogen gas. And that was the universe. And as this hydrogen uh, gas expanded, uh, gravity began to act upon it and pull it together and form hydrogen gas clouds within the expanding universe, which was a hydrogen gas cloud. And as gravity started to uh, react on these different individual hydrogen gas clouds, uh, the gravity became so great uh, that it started fission and fusion, which is mashing these hydrogen atoms together, and stars were born. And stars are what create the elements of the periodic table. Because the pressure, the gravity pressure is so great in these stars that they bash the atoms together and create new atoms. So that's what the universe, now we've got the universe is a bunch of stars. The stars gravitate together and form galaxies. So now the universe is a bunch of stars and galaxies that are rapidly expanding away from each other. Uh, in one particular galaxy, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, formed one particular star, our star, we'll call it the Sun, and <clears throat> that was five billion years ago. And the afterbirth of the Sun is the planets. And the one planet we're most concerned with would be the planet that we like to call Earth. So that was five billion years ago. Three billion years ago, life was created in the form of bacteria. How this happened is a uh, question mark. Most rational people 
believe that it was merely a coincidence of different elements uh, interacting with each other or whatever. Anyway, bacteria mutated, which means it altered randomly its DNA. And when this random DNA mutation benefits the life form, that is called evolution. So bacteria evolved into ocean algae, which evolved into ocean plant life, which evolved into terrestrial plant life, which evolved into ocean fish, which evolved into terrestrial reptiles, which evolved into mammals, which evolved into monkeys, which evolved into humans, which evolved into computers. A humans jumped onto the scene about three million years ago in East Africa. And then they just fucking jumped all over the planet. Because humans are the only species which can survive in every single environment. So, 20,000 years ago, uh, people started farming and domesticating animals and creating languages and laws and governments and countries and nations. Because we're smart. Actually, we're stupid, but we think we're smart. Because we're biased. Anyway, so that's what humans did. And then we got the real civilizations, which uh, started kicking around two and a half thousand years ago uh, in Greece, India, you know, places like that. And then some cat named Buddha started getting all philosophical in India and decided that, uh, you know, when he was dreaming, he thought he wasn't dreaming. So he said, how come my own mind tricks me? Well, I'm not going to trust my mind because it tricks me. So he figured Life could be a dream, so we can't really know if the universe actually exists or not, but we assume it does, because it's a lot easier to get through life if you assume the universe exists. However, if the universe doesn't exist, then we might, you know, have some kind of freaky thing going. That would be the soul. Which means if the universe exists, then everything is as it is. And if the universe doesn't exist, then we have a soul. Okay, this got, uh, this kind of drifted east into China, and they got it right, and it drifted west into the Middle East, and they misinterpreted it and created religion. And then all kinds of shenanigans took place. <laughs> and they're still taking place! <laughs> 
shenanigans. Okay. <laughs> uh, so anyway, now we're going to go into the Dark Ages and Europe and uh, the techno technology, the Industrial Revolution. I was talking to some English guy the other day, and he said, well, in England we had uh, oil, uh, coal and iron, so we made steel, and that's what kicked off the Industrial Revolution. And I said, yeah, you're damn right it did. So now we've got technology. Well, you give monkeys technology and all hell is going to break loose. And that's what happened. Uh, so then we got America creating freedom. Well, <laughs> that adds a whole new freak show to the equation. So we just rock and rolled all through the second millennium. And now we are in uh, the third millennium. This millennium. Our millennium. And gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could make it into the fourth millennium? You know, if our species could survive this millennium, that would just be fantastic. In fact, we should like, you know, try to survive this millennium as a species. And in order to do that, we'd want to uh, not kill the environment. We'd want to save the environment because we need it. And in order to save the environment, we'd want to decrease the number of people on the planet Earth. And in order to do that, we'd want to promote women's reproductive rights and freedom of speech, things like that. in my opinion. Now, the third millennium is a groovy time and there's a lot of funky stuff going on and it's all good. Uh, what we've got here is we've got nations coming together and forming economic alliances and economic communities, and that's great. Europe has an economic community, and that's tremendous. There's a flaw in so much as there's no exit strategy. Countries can't get out of the European economic community without blowing up the entire shithouse. You know, Greece cooked the books to get into it, and now they want to kick Greece out, but they can't. So that's a problem. So economic communities that uh, form in the future need to have an exit strategy for nations that aren't hip to the scene so they can kick countries out if they fuck up. Dig it. Anyway, uh, I'd like to participate in forming economic communities uh, for South America and North America, Southeast Asia, parts of Africa and the Middle East, parts of Eastern Europe, where you get countries that border each other and you provide them with one regional currency and uh, one regional economic community. That would be the job of the International Monetary Fund. And you form regional governments, one government for South America, one government for North America, one government for Latin America, one government for Eastern Europe, one government for parts of uh, Africa, one government for parts of the Middle East. This would be the job of the United Nations. So America's promoting this kind of stuff with freedom of speech and women's rights, and that's great. To learn more on how you can participate in these kinds of activities, you can go to my websites. I have two websites, www.charleswebsterbear.com and www.globalinternetgovernment.com.